You are listening to Meet the Thriller Author, the podcast where I interview writers of mysteries, thrillers, and suspense books. I'm your host, Alan Peterson, and this is episode number 51. In this episode, we're going to be meeting Rachel Sinclair. She is a best-selling author of the Harper Ross legal thrillers. She was a criminal defense attorney for 11 years. Uh, she worked for the uh, public defender's office for several years before striking out on her own, and she currently lives in uh, San Diego, California. Uh, Rachel has a very interesting uh, background. She was a successful uh, romance author uh, before deciding to, to uh, switch to writing legal thrillers. So we're going to talk about uh, making that change, uh, the differences between those two genres, uh, her pro- prolific pace. She's got five novels out so far in 2017 on the Harper Ross uh, legal thriller series and uh, a lot more. It's a great interview, so uh, stay tuned for that. It's coming right up. If you enjoy this uh, podcast, please uh, rate it on iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play or wherever you are subscribed to listening to this podcast. I really appreciate it. Uh, rating those reviews and the ratings best way of helping me get the word out for this podcast so i really appreciate your help on that front so here is my interview with rachel sinclair thanks so much for being on the show really appreciate it thanks for inviting me i i'm excited now i I gave a little bit of your bio there in the beginning but can you tell us a little bit about your background oh sure 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 goodness gracious i lived in kansas city for almost all my life i'm in san diego right now but when i was in kansas city I was an attorney, and I started with the public defender's office, and I worked there for a couple of years, so I got I got my feet wet there, and then I kind of branched off into insurance defense, and then I had my own uh, practice where I kind of did a little bit of everything, including criminal defense, but I also did some bankruptcy and divorces and whatsy, whatsy, whatsy. I moved out to uh, California 2009, and I did not... Dis- I, I decided not to practice law <laughs> because I didn't want to take the bar out here and I was just kind of just tired of it. So I started writing. I started writing and <laughs> for a while I did some academic writing, which is writing for people, <laughs> writing papers for people. <laughs> which, not the most ethical thing in the world, but it did give me writing every single day. <laughs> yeah, good practice, right? <laughs> it paid the bills. <laughs> I wrote papers from I- anything from high school to PhD, believe it or not. <laughs> Craziest thing. And then one day I decided, uh, I read Fifty Shades of Grey, and I'm not going to say what I thought about that <laughs> book, but I kind of thought, well, okay, for some reason that book inspired me to write a novel of my own, and I did. I started with romance. I wrote that for three and a half years. Mm. My first two series did really well, and I ended up selling about 120,000 books in romance, but most of that w- was with my first two series. And so things kind of went downhill for me in romance, and I decided I was going to start writing writing legal thrillers. And I probably answered more than you were expecting, but <laughs> no, no, that's fascinating. So you so you so you did pretty well in romance before uh, switching to thrillers. Were you a fan of romance as a reader before, or or was it more kind of like a uh, more of like a business decision, like oh, I'm gonna you know because of, of the success of Fifty Shades. Yeah. Actually, it's the latter. Mm-hmm. I really was never all that drawn to romance. Growing up, um, I used to read a lot, a lot before I went to law school, believe it or not. <laughs> law school kind of took it out of me, the the, the reading for, for pleasure thing, which is kind of weird. But I would not actually, I was never really drawn to romance. I did like Daniel Steele, of all things. <laughs> She wasn't really like straight r- r- romance, but hers was more like women's fiction and kind of like family sagas, which is actually w- what I really like to, to read. Um, but I also like to read a lot of, back in those days, I read a lot of thrillers. And by thrillers, I mean, I, I read John Grisham, mm-hmm. but I also read R- Robin Cook. Um, do you know who he is? Oh, he yes. Does, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 medical thrillers. Oh, I read everything that he put out. And like everything that John Grisham put out. And Dean Koontz. I liked his supernatural th- th- thrillers. I like the fast-paced thrillers, basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't really even know why I got into romance, except for I just started um, writing it for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just kind of weird. And I didn't know anything about the genre. I didn't. I never really read in the genre. I didn't know anything about the tropes or anything like that. I just kind of just started writing something and threw it out there. And I actually. 
I actually put two books out at once, and I made the first one free, and I didn't really do all that well with those. It wasn't until I got a book bub um, on my first romance that things started to, to really start rolling. Mm. <laughs> and um, I was able to quit my academic writing job <laughs> and kind of concentrate on, on novels full time. <laughs> yeah, well, I can imagine. Once, yeah, once once just once they start selling, then you're then you're like you know kind of like committed to that to to put those books out, and I guess people are exactly. waiting for the other ones in the series. And <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. I just just started writing. You know, I mean, it was, uh, I just kind of fell into it. I guess mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of weird. Yeah, and now that you're writing thrillers, I mean, what's um, do you feel like more at home with that? With your with yeah yeah yes, I do um, because it's it's like okay, um, it, it was. The genre that I was always kind of drawn to, you know, you know, like from a young age. So I kind of like have the rhythms down. I mean, it's kind of ingrained in, in my brain, the rhythms and the tropes and the, you know what I mean? The, mm-hmm. the, the pacing. It's kind of something that I just kind of know. It makes it very easy to write these books. Much easier than, than romance because <laughs> romance, I was never quite sure and I hate to say it, but I really, really, really hated to write sex scenes. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to ask you, were they, were, on the, were they on the steamy side? <laughs> yes, they were steamy. And I, oh my God, it was like, um, <laughs> I was like, how many different ways can you talk about this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I can imagine. I've never. I, I can't imagine. So <laughs> it got to the point where I was like, "Can I just cut in case <laughs> there are earlier scenes?" Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was just. Oh, yeah. So I now in my thriller, I, I don't even know if you know if, if, if this is a thing. But I don't even write anything. I mean, I, I have I have a little bit of romance in there, mm-hmm. a little bit of light. A light romance, but there's no sex scenes. <laughs> Not <even> one. <laughs> yeah, you see, if there is, it's usually like off the page, and the and the right. bedroom door closes. Next chapter. Right. <laughs> yeah. So. so, and I imagine with your background, with your legal background too, is that like, were you like right away? I was like, oh, I'm gonna do legal thrillers, or or did you think about it? Or I mean, because that's such such a wealth of information for you, because you know the lingo and everything. Right. Exactly. That was. That was my thought because, you know, like I said, I, I, I've always been a big fan of, of, of John Grisham and, 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 I, and I, I used to read like everything that he, he writes. So, yeah, I was drawn to legal thrillers just because, as you say, I have a legal background. So, you know, I paid a lot of money for law school. And, <laughs> <laughs> like, so I, I might as well use, you know, <laughs> my, my legal background, yeah. and, you know, in, in a positive way. So. Um, yeah, so I just started writing um, a legal thriller. I, I believe it or not, I put the first one out in March, and I'm already working on the fourth. I looked at that. I'm so jealous. You have four. Know, you, like, yeah, you basically have like four books, and one's coming out. It's like wow. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Did yeah, you, the did, fourth one's coming out in July. Oh no, June. June. It's coming out in like a few weeks. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you're already selling a whole bunch of those from your. Uh, book rank on Amazon I'm I'm, I'm yeah. looking at it right now I'm like wow so they're doing very well huh? it's crazy well you, you know you know John Ellsworth I mean mm-hmm. I, I love him to death but he he gave me a boost he gave me a boost w- w- with my first book because you know he, he's he's very established um in the, the in the legal thriller a, a genre and um he has a, a a very I guess a very engaged mailing list and he let them know about my first book Oh, I love that. Yeah, he was one of our guests. I uh, can't remember yeah. the episode, but yeah. That's oh, a- you know, I, you know, I'm going to have to listen to that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think that's so, I think that's so cool how, uh, in the indie community, uh, you know, even like, you know, you're both in the same genre, uh, but yeah. you help right. each other out. It's just, I think that's so awesome. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's yeah. true. She, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, bless his heart. I didn't even know that he found out that I was writing legal thrillers, you know, so he, you got to contact me on the blue one. I was like, yeah, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> and, and, you know, do, do you know? And believe it or not, I mean, this was like the best launch I've ever had. <laughs> I sold 220 books in one day with his mailing list. I was like, Whoa. wow. I, I was not expecting that at all. I thought maybe 20, you know, because that's, I mean, my, my mailing list never does that for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so... Yeah, so it was crazy. I had a nice a nice launch with because of him and he and he wrote a nice blurb for me and I don't know. It just kinda of just started snowballing from there and 
because I write so fast, I was able to keep it going, the momentum, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to ask you about your writing process a little bit. I'm going to be taking notes. But anyway, but can you tell us a little bit about, uh, uh, about the Harper Ross, about the character, and, the, and, and yeah, just what the books are about? Let's see here. Um, I created her. She's, wasn't, she's kind of based on me, but not really. But let's see here. Harper Ross is, she's 35, and she's redhead like me, but her hair is redder than mine and curly. She is a recovering alcoholic, actually. In the first book, she actually goes on a bender. Mm-hmm. And the readers learn that she actually has had problems with, with, with alcohol in the past. So this is, this is something that she's going to always kind of struggle with. And she's also struggling with um, bipolar dis- disorder, which I actually kind of know about because my sister is bipolar. Mm. So I kind of give her some, some, some challenges <laughs> to overcome. What can I say about Harper Ross? I mean, she's like... Any other attorney that she's that she fights hard for for her people, mm-hmm. but she also kind of bends the law a little bit <laughs> to, um, <laughs> once in a while to to um, well, well, like in the first book, okay, she um, decides that she wants to adopt these two girls because basically what happens is that she she defends a guy and she gets him off on a tec- on a technicality and she and she knew he was guilty. And he goes on and he murders a young mother. So she decides that she that she's going to take in the uh, two girls of the young mother. But they take the, the girls away from her because of she works so much and everything. And plus she has, you know, problems. And they go into an abusive house, right? Mm-hmm. And so they come to her and, they, and they're like, well, you know, I'm the, the, the kids being abused and, then, and all this stuff. And so she keeps the girls. <laughs> she keeps them, which is basically basically kidnapping. <laughs> <laughs> so um, she goes to jail for that, and just uh, for, for like one, one day. And she's and she's going to be charged with, with kidnapping. But then um, some other stuff happens, and she ends up getting the girls. But you know that that's the kind of thing that she'll do. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, things like the attorneys in the real world wouldn't, wouldn't probably wouldn't do. <laughs> yeah, because you can lose your bar, or do something like that. I mean, you know, committing a felony. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, so in the second case, in in the second book, she actually throws a case because she doesn't like the the uh, defendant. But he he did actually do it. Oh, I guess I probably should. No, the spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> Oh boy! Sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a lot more complicated than that, though. Yeah. It's, it has a, it had a lot of twists and turns, but yeah. Are any part of the books uh, based on any of your like real? I mean, you probably couldn't say, but I mean, like uh, your yeah. uh, stuff that you saw in the real life, or I brought in one case. Actually, it was like this case that uh, this guy who, when I was a public defender, and he was a drug dealer, and he beat his his partner with a to death with a phone. And, and he said, darling, I had to do it because she was turning me in. Oh, wow. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, he didn't actually say this is self-defense, but I kind of like made it, you know, mm-hmm. I, I kind of threw it in, you know, this, what, what, this, this character. I do kind of like use my kind of like sensibilities with her because I have to admit I'm a bleeding heart. I am. <laughs> <laughs> And I always was with my clients that I had with the public defender's office. I mean, no matter what they did, I usually felt sorry for them, <laughs> believe it or not. Yeah, well, that's the whole thing of being a defense attorney. That's the whole system is based on that anyway, right? So yeah. just, no matter what, you're just supposed to def- defend them. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and I always had sympathy for them, you know? Mm-hmm. Like this one kid, he was facing robbery, a robbery charge because of something that he did. And he was this little kid. I mean, he was a young kid. He had a bald head, and he started just bawling. And I was like, cool, I'm so sorry, you know. <laughs> you know? So a little things like that I do give to Harper because she's a bleeding heart like me, and she feels sorry for her, her clients like I do. And So I guess I kind of do base my experiences from the public de- defender's office. I mean, I do take them in that way because of the way that I, I felt about my, my clients. But I don't really... I haven't really like taken like a case that I had and like put it into my uh, thrillers yet, but I might in the, in the future, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And are you still uh, so you're not you're not writing romance anymore? You just, you're focused on the thrillers. 
Well, never actually, say never. <laughs> I actually started a new adult romance about a month ago, and I might, I might go ahead and keep kind of working on that. Mm-hmm. I kind of do miss romance because it's it's a different emotion that you put into it. I did kind of enjoy that part of romance was the emotions. And so I do kind of miss it. And I might go ahead and publish a few a year. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Depends on if I can (laughs) wedge it into my schedule. (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. That's uh, that's amazing. So so you've, so you have three of the legal thrillers published right now and and once coming up. Uh, So these are all in this in 2017 that you've published these. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what yeah. is your schedule, your process? I mean, do you outline these like very thoroughly, or are you the seat of your pants? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see here. The first three I pantsed completely. Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, you know, it's it's kind of funny. And this is and this is true for every book that I've ever written. When I'm writing it and I'm like, this is the stupidest thing in the whole wide world. This is just such crap. And I'm like, I mean, what am I doing? But then I read it through and I'm like, you know, it's not so bad. <laughs> I love that. I love that when that happens. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. It's, it's weird because I'm still doing it. But yeah, I, I pants. Um, and I have discovered a little device that has actually focused me because focus is not my strong suit <laughs> at all. I mean, I... I'm very unfocused, um, but I, I I discovered this this little device. It's called um, oh my god, I was blinking on it now. It's it's on my Apple, and it's called Focus Watch, and basically it's 25 minute sprints, and while that Focus Watch is going, I'm focused on what I'm doing. Um, so this has actually enabled me to start writing 2,000 words an hour. Um, I know, isn't that crazy? And so I try to aim for about eight or 10,000 words a day. So that's what I do. I never used to write this fast, though. I mean, this is, this is a new thing for me. When I was writing romance, it was pretty much 3,000 words a day and 5,000 words a day if I was pushing it hard, you know, pushing it. But these books are easier for me to write. Mm-hmm. And also, this focus watch has really helped me. So yeah, um, I'm a lot faster than a lot faster than I used to be. And do you use um like um what do you use for software? Do you use Word or like a Scrivener? I do use Word, do yeah. Use Word? Okay. And then and then and then I put it into to, to Vellum. To, mm-hmm. to, I love Vellum. No, I know I did too. Oh and, my god, I love Vellum so much. And they're coming out with a print version in June. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm, because I don't like have any print v- versions for sale because I, I, I can't seem uh, I, I couldn't get it right because I had to put my my word into a PDF and it would just mess it up. Yes. So now that Vellum is it's doing it, I, I'm going to put everything onto a paperback. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's going to be that's going to be very exciting. <laughs> yeah, I know it is exciting. Uh, my God. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. And so do you? Um, and then like. Um, so when you finish uh, writing your 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 books, then uh, uh, do you write pretty clean, or do you have to do you, do you send them off to editors and stuff? Yeah, um, yeah, um, I send it to a proofreader, and but they're pretty clean. I send it to a proofreader, and they usually get it done within a couple of days, and then I get it out there. And do you usually write in the same spot? Like, do you have like a, a place dedicated in your house, or do you go to the coffee shops? Usually I'm just sitting on the couch with my laptop and my I, I have a little thing um, that my laptop sits on a little black thing. Yeah. And um, that's usually what, what uh, typically what, what I do. But sometimes I go to coffee shops just for for a change of pace. Mm-hmm. You know, because also to get out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> because yeah. as you know, it's it's, it's kind of isolating to, mm-hmm. to be a writer. You know. And sometimes it's kind of nice to 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 be around people. But yeah, usually it's just here at home. Yeah, and do you write every day? Uh, five days a week. Five days a week. Okay. Yeah, Monday through Friday, and sometimes I work. Uh, and sometimes I write on Saturday, but I do. I, I I do need some downtime, so I try to take about a week, where I just kind of just like watch television and <laughs> you <know>? recover. <laughs> yeah. You know, just kind of. Um, but other than that, yeah, I'm writing a lot. <laughs> 
And I don't really want to have to write a book a month. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I figured that the best way to launch a brand new pen name in a brand new genre was to write really, really rapidly for, for like the first six or seven mm -hmm. and try to get my name established before kind of slowing down. I don't know if I'm going to burn out because of that, though. That's, that's my one that's my one concern. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And do you like, a, so do you like set up a whole, like a, do you have like a website for Rachel Sinclair and all that stuff? Or are you just <laughs> focusing on the books? <laughs> if only I were that organized. <laughs> yeah. So, um, probably I'm going to try to, um, you know, do some, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, where you exchange with other authors or whatever. To, oh yeah. Yeah. Those, uh, mailing uh, exchanges or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah. I always feel like I feel bad doing that because I'm because I don't really bring anything to the table with my, you know, yeah. with my 40 person mailing list, you know, <laughs> but, um, yeah. I, I don't know how else to um, really build it up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes, but that's uh, I mean, it's kind of a, it's kind of interesting though. you're doing all this, you're doing, you're starting off with your legal thrillers and without ha having all that other stuff going on and all, so it's kind of kind of nice actually <laughs> that you know the work itself and the genre itself is popular enough that it's kind of right now it's just pushing yeah. you along without having to, to to focus too much on the other stuff for right now right well it, it, here, here's here's exactly exactly how I've done it and I don't know if this is the reason why I don't get people on the mailing list but when I publish a book I put the next one up for pre-order for 99 cents mm hmm and what that does is that it gets the book in the pre-order status on the hot new release list, which I didn't even know was possible, but <laughs> apparently it is. And it stays on the hot new re release list when it when it launches. So that I, I think that's the reason why I've been able to keep it going mm -hmm. was is is just by doing it that way. Because if I didn't put it up for pre-order. And I just launched it, you know, it would probably launch into oblivion, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I don't have a mailing list and, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, that's been my, my, my method and believe it or not, it's worked. And then once, once the book is published, then it goes up to its regular price? Yeah, I put it up to two ninety nine once it's published. Mm -hmm. But in the pre-order status, it's at $0.99 cents and, um, and, and every pre-order gets better and better. You know, um, like the first time I did that, the pre-order kind of like struggled along. But then the second time the pre-order did well. And now this pre-order, this pre-order is doing really well. So I'm, I'm building. <laughs> yeah, that's, it must be exciting to see that, that building going on. Yeah, yeah. it is. It is. Um, but it's, it, it's, it, it all comes down to me, you know, publishing every 30 days. Yeah. Which is a lot. A yeah. Lot. <laughs> so you must be already working on book number five, or? Well, no, book number four, um, and then I'm going to put the next one up for, for pre-order in July, and then I'm going to go on vacation. Good for you. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Back to Kansas City um, to see my, my my people, and I might not publish in August. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet, uh. but. I think I might need a vacation by then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, like you said, too, you try to prevent that bird out or whatever. So, yeah, you got to make sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't want it to get to where, oh, my God, Har you know, what is Harper up to now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you still find time to read? Yeah, actually, um, I um, I do like to, to still read. Um, like, I like John, John Ellsworth. Mm -hmm. He writes really good books. Um, and Scott Pratt. I also read a. I'm also thinking about getting into psycho thrillers um, at some point in the future. So I've been kind of reading in that genre too. Oh, okay, like the serial killer. Th and yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yes, serial killers and psychological thrillers like The Girl on the Train and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm reading at at, at the moment. All right. Well, it's been so fa so fascinating uh, uh, talking to you about the, about all this uh, and your. It's been so amazing to see the the success that you've been having. So it's uh, so it's very exciting to uh, to to see that. <laughs> as, yeah. as, 
And well, I'm on the riding treadmill, though. I, I, I don't recommend that to everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. You, you already had experience from before. So, like, someone starting out from scratch, you probably should. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> the riding treadmill is probably, yeah, it, it's, well, God, I have 20 books out. No, even more than that, a romance. <laughs> so, it's something that I've been doing for, you know, I mean, I. I, I have a lot of experience writing books, mm-hmm. and you still you still enjoying it, obviously, because you're still putting these out. You're not to, not thinking about going going to get to your bar. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, going to oh oh uh, California bar. <laughs> oh no 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 oh no! <laughs> Actually, I shudder to <laughs> this. It's, it's kind of funny when when I'm writing these legal thrillers, and I'm putting Harper in hot water for for this and that. I start to have like. PTSD about my own experience. <laughs> uh, oh my god, it's being a being an attorney is very stressful. Uh, oh my god, it is so stressful because you get it from everybody. You get it from your judges, your clients, and the other a- a- attorneys. It's all sides. It's it's, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, I just watched that uh, Better Call Saul. Have you ever seen that TV show? <laughs> No, no, I haven't. It's, like, it's really good. It's really good, and it's about tur- attorneys, and it just shows, yeah, like you were saying, like she like yeah. takes a five minute nap, you know, and it's like that's just, yeah. just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh my god, it's yeah. It was. I don't recommend if anybody's out there thinking about going to law school. Just <laughs> maybe think twice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Funny. It's it's funny because I was like having lunch with my boyfriend. And I was like, you know, this is the first time, this is the first job I've had where I don't have to worry about somebody being mad at me. <laughs> so nice, yeah. <laughs> when you're an attorney, someone's always mad at you about something. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's good. It's being a writer, you you don't have to worry about people getting mad. <laughs> it's just like the greatest thing. <laughs> And so, what's uh, what's uh, advice would you have for uh, if, uh, before I let you go for like people who are listening who maybe are thinking about becoming writers and any oh, advice about the self-publishing thing yeah okay uh let's see here well i've learned quite a bit actually over over the years if you're thinking about going into self-publishing um there are some really good genres that are good for for, for indies romance and um, urban fantasy but they're pretty crowded right now um but um uh the way I got established in the first place with the romance was I wrote in series and I made the first book free. And then I was able to get some book bobs on the first book, um, which is really, which is, which, which made me crazy money. I mean, crazy money. Like I made $70,000 in three months on wow. that way. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that's one thing that you could do if you're thinking about going into romance. Um, I don't even know if that's even still a good thing to do, perma free and all that stuff because of KU mm-hmm. and you know and um, all the things, all all the changes that have been happening since I first got into the, the game. Because see, I I got in at, at 2013 and that was before any K, KU. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and um, as for getting into thrillers. Um, ah, you could do it my way. Um, you know, just basically bang out, you know, like, like a ton of books and and make sure that you're, you know, always on the hot new re- re- release list. But um, if that's not possible, oh goodness, I really, you know, I, I don't even really know how to get traction um, in the thriller arena. I mean, aside from the way that I'm, I'm doing it, I, I I don't know, Alan. How 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 do you? I mean, what, what kind of things do, do you... Well, 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 I like what you did. You know, I think it's like, you know, like uh, diving deep into the genre like you did, you know, like you, you know, it's legal thrillers. And uh-huh. if, you look, if you look at the Amazon categories, I mean, there's like financial and there's right. pulp. And right, so, you right, know, right. that's kind of what I did too. I kind of carved out a little there in, uh, in like the spy thriller stuff, you know. And right, 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 yeah. So, yeah, because I think, you know, if you're going with like, you know, wide and thrillers, it's, it's kind of tough. And, and, and the big publishing houses, the traditional publishing houses kind of still dominate, you know, Michael Connolly and all these people. Right. But if we go down, if you dig deep down in there, I think it's a little bit more hope. 
<laughs> well, that's what I noticed. Okay, um, Alan, about about um, w- when I started thinking about getting out of romance because my God, that's a saturated genre. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I mean, you look at the hot new release, and it's like you have to like be, you know, launch at like five hundred to even get on that. You know, <laughs> so um, so uh, with the legal thrillers, what what really impressed me was when I looked at the H and R because I um, I got on there and I was like fourteen thousand in the store, and I was like, and I was on the first page. <laughs> Of the hot new release, I was like, really? At 14000 So, I mean, because I'm, I'm used to, 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 to romance, and you're not going to get on the first page of nothing at, at 14000 You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and, and like, n- number 100 on the hot new release is, like, ranked in the millions. So, I was like, this is, this is a much better genre for visibility mm-hmm. than romance. I mean, much better. So that's also another reason why I think I've been able to do well is because I've been uh, I've been visible, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been in, in like the also bots of some really like high rank books, which never would have happened in romance, <laughs> you know, never, ever, ever. So um so that's a good thing. It's 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 a it's it's a visibility issue. Um and if you can find um a genre that you can get visibility and it's still kind of popular, then that's a good genre to do. My dog's barking. <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, it's over. You're over your time, <laughs> Mom. Hang up. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that, Alan. Oh, no, it's okay. Hey, I have I have my own, and I'm kind of been amazed that they haven't barked, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, now I've lost my train of thought about the H&R. Oh, yeah. Um, so, so that's a big deal. That's a big deal, the visibility thing. Mm-hmm. Um and also, do you know what I was thinking about? I was thinking that maybe in certain like um, uh, genres that are dominated by, by trads, indies might actually be able to stand out because we price low and they don't. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I didn't even think about that. I mean, but yeah, especially is- especially now, like the big the big uh, the big writers in those genres, their ebooks are selling for like fifteen bucks. I know, like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's true. It's like fifteen bucks. You know, like at, at the minimum. Ten dollars, mm-hmm. and so there I am for two ninety nine. Do you know what I mean? So that's also another because I thought about this today. It, it just occurred to me that in in genres where the indies dominate, like romance and urban fantasy, like everybody is at two ninety nine. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So you can't really like stand out for pricing low, but you can in other genres where the trads are you know dominated. So that's another thought I had about, you know, cho- choosing a genre. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I like I like what you did too because you you knew the legal field and so you, you're writing thrillers in that because people sometimes say, you know, you always hear that advice, write what you know, and then you're like, well, how am I going to write what I know when I'm writing thrillers? But that's how you know you take your background and, you know, my yeah, thrillers yeah. I set them in, in I, a lot of my thrillers are set in Latin America and stuff because I grew up there, so I know that area. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just put them in there. So that's kind of what you do. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, but yours are spy thrillers, and I'm assuming you haven't been a spy. No, no, no. Well, no, no, I'm just kidding. No, I have done. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but it's just it's just interesting. Just uh, uh, there's still a lot of options there for people. So it's, I think it's just I think it's still an exciting time in the in the publishing world. So <laughs> it is. It is such an exciting time because you know, I mean, my God, I, if you would, if you would have told me seven years ago that I would be making a living writing fiction i'd be like yeah right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so it's 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 exciting that you can actually get in i'm i'm like living my dream you know what i mean yes absolutely <laughs> yep so because I, I i've always considered myself to be a writer even when i was an attorney and all i wrote was uh motions mm-hmm. <laughs> i was like i'm a writer you know yeah. but now i really am so it's it's exciting it was real nice uh ni- nice uh, chatting with you you too, Alan. You too. You, it, it's, it's been a pleasure. 
Thank you for listening to this episode of Meet the Thriller Author. I'd like to ask you to please review and rate this uh, podcast over on iTunes. It really helps me get the word out. If you take a few seconds of your time to uh, do that, it would be much appreciated. You can also visit my website at thrillingreads.com forward slash podcast for show notes on this episode, as well as information about the uh, podcast in general. And you can also sign up for my mailing list there. You'll be getting uh, special offers from our guests, as well as information, uh, behind the scenes information on the podcast. And uh, please do visit my author website at alanpeterson.com. I appreciate your support. And so until next episode, I will talk to you then.